Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So in this episode, this is part three, finally, can you believe it, of Rolling Thunder? Um, if you didn't see parts one and two, hit pause right now. I'll put a link right up here. You can just click on it. You can see part one where we actually picked it up. I took my buddy Drew, we met Kevin, the guy who sold it to me. And uh, he said the monitor wasn't working, the board was working, but when we took it home, we realized it wasn't. So uh, episode two, I got the board working. We rewired some stuff and then realized that the monitor is kind of shot. So it's actually doesn't have, we're not gonna lose hope yet. We're gonna do a rejuvenation in this episode. So hopefully we'll bring back all the colors, the red and the green. Uh, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shut it off. And the power's back here. Um, there's a couple security bits. There's one, two, three, and four. I believe I already replaced these with newer ones. These are brand new. So let me go ahead and get my security bit set. And we can get this off here. So just wanted to say something real quick. The fact that the monitor is at an angle like this means the back of the monitor, if you look at it, is gonna be down here, the neck. And if you try to um, rejuvenate it like this, it actually sends charges to the neck and blows off some of the oxidation on the inside of it, on the metal, and that will fall down. You want it to kind of fall, you know, down here towards this side of the tube, not the back. Because if it falls in the back, you end up getting shorts, which has happened to me. Um, ask Jason, he'll tell you, my buddy Jason, we were trying to do it. And uh, we actually had to tilt the whole thing forward on a spy hunter because it was kind of deep. And uh, then we rejuved it and everything worked and he has a gorgeous monitor now. So uh, to avoid any hassle and, and, you know, it's kind of a pain to take it out, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just take these out. I have some security bits. I just got to figure out which ones fit here. So there's one. And again, I do have these. I'm going to keep them there just in case. I don't want to lose them, but... Um, so the way you take this off is you have to actually remove the control panel uh, to gain access. So I'm taking these off first. I've taken it off before because when I grabbed it actually the monitor was just in there just wobbly. So I had to open this up, tighten it up and do all that stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this. I forgot to do that. There you go. So we'll go inside the coin door. Got the latches here. There's one. There we go. All right. Let's see. So that can come off. I might just leave it there. So this comes off here. I'll put this on the side here on the floor. Um. I know the glass comes out. I have a suction thing I can use. Let me see if I can go grab that. I'm gonna actually put that on so it doesn't fall. See if it works. We'll stick on there and you can, there you go. Hey, it worked great. It's like a suction cup to kind of help you lift glass off. This glass has seen better days. It's scratched. You can see somebody scratched your name on it. Um, but it's a nice basic piece, so you can go locally and grab tempered glass and do it that way. So this is the cardboard bezel. This is going to need some repair. I do have some black duct tape that I can use to repair this. Right now they use electrical tape, so we'll just uh, have to do that. Let me put it somewhere where it's really going to be safe for now on top of the outrun there. And then uh, you have to take out the four bolts. There's one there, one there three and four. All right, so that's loose. This one here is loose. Oh, and by the way, let me disconnect it before I forget. So I'll try to pull it out and break the cord. Uh, same thing with the power. So the power and the RGB are disconnected. So now this is completely loose. There's like a piece of wood in the back. So I'm just gonna basically pull it out through the front. You just lift. It's not bad. I've had 27 inch beasts that I've lifted out on my own. So, and that's it. This is it. So let me go ahead and put this down. I didn't bother um, 
discharging it because to get underneath, it's a little more dangerous to reach your hand in there and kind of grab it because it's at a weird angle. This thing here is blocking it. All right, so let's get this guy on here. And you know what? I'm gonna face it this way so you guys can see what's going on. Basic safety for discharging. I'm gonna go through it anyway since we're here. Might as well, right? Um, don't always trust the cord. You know, I, I know people that solder it directly onto here or they wind it around and they put electrical tape. If that thing comes off, you're getting shocked. You're taking everything. You might as well just touch it like that. Uh, this has an insulation on it, but still, um, you want to always double check your connector. So what I typically do is I'll set it for continuity, which is here. I'll quickly test here to here to make sure that it's connected. Right now it's good. That means the wire is good. All the connections are good. I'm good to go. And then the other thing I do is, let me see if I can make it stick. Well, you know what? I'll do it on the other end. It's just easier. It's already open. So I'll stick this on there. Works perfectly. It's nice and good. So I'll hold this on here. That's one end. And then the other end, it should beep. Okay. So now, you know, you have a connection from the end to this end. So you're good to go. So it can't hurt. It takes two seconds to do. Takes you longer to pick yourself up off the floor if you get shocked. So I always do it. So you want to make sure that you're good. Stick it right there on the chassis. I'm not liking how this is not coming off. Hang on a second. I'm trying to pull this rubber boot off and it's not coming off. There we go. So that goes right on there touching and then I just make sure that that's on there it's good to go and if you want to double check again if you're super paranoid I usually don't do it but you can you can also do this make sure you have a sound for continuity let's see yep you can just touch the chassis that means you have continuity so you're good that means it's attached correctly um, I did that once um, thinking just like a last minute thing. And then I realized I had it on a painted surface. So I'm glad I did because it didn't beep. So I had to put it somewhere else. So put one hand in your pocket. I'm wearing, I'm not wearing sneakers. I'm just wearing socks, but you'll hear it. Oh, this one self discharging. So I didn't hear anything. Good to go. Once you touch it and you hear the pop, you can actually go ahead and carefully pop it off. So I'm good. I usually just do it again, just in case. Some people like to wait a few minutes, you do it again. Um, you know, I'm not gonna do that because I'm not gonna be working on it. Um, what I'm gonna do is you gotta take the neck off. So can you guys see that? I'm just slowly, it's always good to get it in an even, just work it around, wiggle, but not too much. So that's it right there. Um, when you're putting it on, Never put it on with the edges. You want to kind of push in the center kind of to support this because, you know, you don't want to snap it in half. That's how they snap in half. <clears throat> so I'm looking really quick. I just want to see. I can't visually I'm trying to inspect them just to see if there's anything that needs to be reflowed. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave it. If I still have problems, I'll reflow it then. So let me go ahead and get the rejuvenator. So 23 is usually the one that fits. There's a whole bunch of different sizes you can use. So I'm going to use this one right here, which is 23. And it fits, you know, in here. You just compare the neck boards. It looks like it's the same size. Actually, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins, eight pins. And this looks like it's more. One, two, three, four, five, six, 11. Hmm. Yeah, it'll tell you which one to use. That might not be the right one. I don't think 23 is the one. Let me see. I can't remember. This one's different. 23 is the one I thought I always use. <laughs> this one is less. And I have some other ones. They're just not in here. I have to kind of hunt them down. 
wow, this is a tube. It's a really skinny tube. Huh. Wonder if they did a tube swap. Um, wow, I might not be able to rejuve it. Yeah, this is a whole different connector. So 23 is typically what I use, but it does not fit. It's completely different. It's a smaller neck. So, um, this doesn't fit, right? No, that's different. So I do have a couple that I have laying around. I have to just check where it is. And what you do is you just connect it to the adapter and then it works. So let me go ahead and look for it. I'm gonna go ahead and pause to save memory here. And then I'm gonna come back when I found it. All right, guys, so we're back. Um, so I actually stopped doing this last night. I went to bed because I needed to think about it because what ended up happening is I do not have the adapter for this. If you look at the adapter that I keep in this bag, I have a whole bunch of them. The most common is the 23. This is the one that, you know, has keyed and everything. You kind of just pop it on there instead of the neck board. Um, so I do have smaller ones that are eight pins, but they do not fit. Um, you know, they need the adapter in order to work. So I have a ton of them. Of course, I don't have the CR31, which is a thinner version of the K7000, because I do have K7000s, but this is a thinner neck. So <clears throat> what I gotta do is, I looked on the internet, could not find it anywhere. Um, contacted Arcade Buffet, he's like the king of all stuff when it comes to chassis and uh, monitors and stuff. Um, he needs to create a new one. He has created a new one. I saw an order page where He'll take one of these dead boards, he'll actually take this piece out and construct his own wires, because there are wiring, I found the schematics to make your own, but you need a donor CR31 uh, neck board in order to do it. Um, so I'm assuming he has access to parts and he has it on his page, it was 25 bucks, uh, $4 shipping, so I went ahead and ordered it last night, because even though this doesn't pan out, I still want to have that in my arsenal to get, you know, to put on my, uh, to have in my rejuvenator kit. Um, so yeah, so at this point it's a waiting game. I contacted him through YouTube and I said, you know, I ordered it through your page. Not sure how old that is, but, uh, hopefully you still do it. So fingers crossed, he'll be able to do it. So we're going to get back to this later, but in the meantime, I wanted to at least reflow, uh, the neck board just to see if that, maybe there was a cold solder joint somewhere for that particular gun. It's possible here, you know, that the, uh, pots are bad. Not really sure. I think I might have some K7000 pots. I think I do actually in stock, um, you know, but you know, in the meantime, I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna, let me just take this off here. I usually just put a new one anyway with new tie wraps. Um, so yeah, we'll just take it from there. I'm just gonna reflow it. So let me go ahead and uh, get my soldering iron all heated up and stuff. We'll go ahead and see if we can reflow this and we'll get a different angle here so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, guys, so we're back. Um, I got some better lighting too, that way you can see what I'm doing. So I set up my Hako over here. This is a triple eight D. Um, I'll put a link in the description cause it's just, this thing is a workhorse and I love it. Um, so whoop, let me actually get this too. So let me move this here. I actually got the tripod stuck on that. Apologize. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, do some reflowing here. Um, I really don't like, looks like they changed out some transistors here too. <laughs> that are huge. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those because I think they did a little bit of a sloppy job here. I just think they're too long, to be honest. Um, let me take these here. Looks like they were all swapped out. I wonder if I should reflow those too. Could be what the issue is. they were bent up a little bit and I'm going to get rid of these pieces because they tend to, sometimes they stick to the PCB when you're working and uh, that's not good. Here, let me see if I can uh, get that last one right there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let me just take in a, I'm just inspecting these really quick. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, actual pots themselves. Um, okay, well, whatever. Let's go ahead and reflow. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then that's the eighth one right there. So I'm using the uh, really good 
This has lead in it, the uh, solder. I think it's Kester. But it's totally worth it. Ever since I got this, it just, I never had a problem reflowing stuff. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, add some stuff just to make sure it's all good. Come on. There you go. So this is old solder on here. So whoever did the cap kit, they should know better. <laughs> you really need to reflow everything when you're doing it. Because, uh, come on. There we go, I'm just adding a little bit. <clears throat> that one actually didn't take too well. Add a little bit more. When you add new um, solder, it actually gives it, you know, it kind of wakes up the old solder. The real way of doing this is to um, use, I could use my Hako desoldering iron right now and totally uh, suck everything out. You're not really supposed to keep adding stuff. So the real way to reflow is to take everything off and then put it back on. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the last one right here. There we go. All right. Yeah. Just inspecting that one. It doesn't look too good. And you don't want to lift the pads because then you're going to have to do traces and uh, you got to have to repair the traces with some, uh, with the bridge there. Which I've done. It's not a big deal. Just a pain. I'm going to redo these. I don't like how these look. There we go. All right, that looks good, that looks good. And now, <clears throat> these look awful. Let's see if I can get them in there. It's one, two. Because it's very possible that there's no pads underneath. You know, maybe I should remove them just to see what's happening there. But either way, can't hurt to add a little bit, reflow. All right. So there's that one, there's that one, and there's that one, which I just did. Okay. Yes, they look good. I'm just looking at the... Uh, I'm gonna reflow these just in case. Come on, there you go. These are the actual pots that I'm doing right now. Okay. And that was the green. This is the second green right here. This one looks a little questionable. And I typically use my, uh, have these magnifier things that you wear. They're pretty awesome, uh, but they're pretty cool. And I'll show them off uh, when I do a cap kit. I plan to do that soon. I got to pull that outrun monitor. I'll probably give it a quick uh, test with my rejuvenator because rejuvenators, they don't always, they don't just rejuvenate. They, uh, you can test them too, just to see how strong each gun is. Um, so a lot of people think, oh, Stay away from those things. They're actually really good if you just use them for testing, you know. You don't have to rejuve them every time. Uh, there's that. And then the last one is down there. I think those are the ones I just redid. Under. Huh. These look sloppy. It looks like those two points are touching. They're not supposed to be. Could just be a sloppy job, to be honest. I mean, you know what? I'm gonna fire up my Hako. It's not plugged in, of course. Let me uh, open this fell too. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this thing has gotten loose. I gotta order a new one. Um, it actually came defective when I got it. Um, but, I mean, works fine, but it's really supposed to stay in nice, nice and stiff like that. 
And I didn't realize it until I went to a friend's house who had one and he, his was fine. <laughs> but they are pretty solid otherwise. Um, you know what, let me go ahead and plug that in. I'll go around back here. <clears throat> now I'll make sure that I grab that. Okay, now it's heating up, right? Yeah. And I gotta double check the tip that I have on there. I might have to swap it out to a bigger tip. I have plenty over here. These are all the different ones that I ordered. So the biggest one I think might be on it now. Here's the one for tiny stuff. Uh, yeah, I believe, I mean, look at these two, it's between these two. Yeah, this one here looks bigger. But I think the one on it is fine. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna change it out. All right, you guys get to see my Hako in action. <laughs> and uh, I waited a little while to do the review on that because, uh, which is coming soon, by the way. It looks great. I did some uh, great stuff with that. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everything was good with how to use it. I didn't want to just like uh, review it like a lot of people do. They just take it right out of the box and review it. Um, and that's not what I wanted to do. So, put that one, put that one in there. And it's better to do it when it's hot um, because if there's any solder in there, it takes it out. All right, <clears throat> so let me go ahead and just use this thing. The cord's not very long, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take these out because it looks like there might be a short here. No, you know what? It looks like it's supposed to be like that. But the pads are there, so that's good. All right, and that's gonna fall right out, so I gotta be careful. Let me quickly grab it. This thing is really amazing, dude. <laughs> I love this thing. Every time I talk to people about it, it could be that this thing is just old. Yeah, I'm twisting it back and forth. These pots are really cheap and old. This one is the, uh, it says 201 on it. 201W. But uh, I got to look because I get a whole bunch of parts from uh, Arcade Parts and Repair. So it's VR206. I might have this in stock. Um, you know what? I might want to change it. Anyway, let me pop it back in there. So yeah, saw how easy that was. That thing is amazing. <laughs> I think John has said it too on John's Arcade. Uh, when he got it, it was like just this amazing, you know, changes your life when it comes to cap kits. You can do them in like minutes versus hours. Let me put more on here. And I think that's supposed to be together. Okay. Oh, did I put more here? It's hard because like you're trying to twist the wires and they don't want to bend the way you want to bend them. Uh, I think that's good. That happens a lot where it just goes right through. Let's see. There we go. All right. So let me go ahead and tin this. Make sure it's good to go. Um, I don't think I need any more. Looking just to see what else I can do here. I mean, I could pull this and uh, reflow that, uh, but if I pull it, I might as well cap it. And it looks like these caps are pretty new. Um, what I didn't do is check to make sure the polarity is good on all of them. But if that, if they were bad, it wouldn't even turn on. You'd see smoking right away. Um, <clears throat> but I might want to reflow the connector here. That could be bad too. I didn't think of that. You know what I really should do is hook up that uh, the game to another monitor and see what's going on. Oh wait, I did that. What am I saying? 
course I did. So yeah, I'm gonna hook up a TPG to this. That's what I'm gonna do. So let me go ahead. I just refloat everything. Um, looks good. I'm not gonna put the cardboard on just yet. I was gonna put it back on with some tie wraps. Um, and you wanna definitely, when you're doing it, you don't wanna push like this. A lot of people do that, it snaps in half. You wanna kinda go in the general area and just kinda massage it in there. All right, that's good to go. You know what, I didn't check either. Let me take it off real quick. Come on, there you go. Just wanted to check the pins. And it looks like they're all good. None of them are bent. Um, they're not corroded or anything. So that wouldn't cause it either. So let me just, again, even pressure. Nice, nice and easy. All right, this one's definitely on there. I'll fix that later. I'll clean all this up later. We gotta put the cup on. And our cup is important. You don't want that thing falling off. So, right now it's on there really good. I usually give it a quick little wiggle to make sure it's in there. And that's what we'll do. So let me turn it around. Make it easier here. I'm gonna use the Outrun's power. What I did is I created a harness. So here's my TPG, which I'm gonna place right here for now. Um, and I did build a harness made out of uh, old power supplies actually, because they're thicker gauge from like ATX power supplies. So I just built my own. And uh, I just put the ends on them. So I have this end that's the male and that's the female. So basically you're just creating an extension cord. So what I do, since this is right here next to my system, and it has the, you definitely need to hook it up to an isolation transformer. So let me move this out a little bit. Hang on, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go around. Let me just grab it by the coin door here. I have this thing on sliders, so it's pretty easy. I'm gonna open it up. Let me take off my lights here. And, and I can turn this off by the way. Okay, and is this off too? I'll do that as well. So it's right here. So I just kind of grab it. And it's probably off camera, you can't see it, but I'm going to grab the extension, plug it in. Oh, I plugged the wrong end in here. Plug it into power. Plug this into here. And let me go ahead and uh, adjust my test pattern generator here. So the TPG is great. The only complaint I have about it is that there's no LED. They need an LED so you know it's on because um, I haven't killed the battery yet, but a lot of people complain about that, where you turn it on and you forget about it. You should have it off. <laughs> so I always make it, I always double check like a hundred times. Oh, let me make sure it's off. So it's set the standard resolution, it's off. Um, but if it had an LED, you could tell if it's on, it's easy. Uh, okay, so let's hook this up, RGB. And then, let's see if that works. <clears throat> All right, so I just gotta power up the Outrun, which is right here. And this looks like it's charged. Oh, there we go. So now everything's on. Let me see what's going on here. Okay, so the monitor did fire up. I'm gonna turn on the TPG. There we go, we got a signal. Let me uh, turn this off over here. And I'll also shut this off right here on the camera. Let me just reach in here. All right. Well, you know what? I'm gonna just make it a little bit dim so you can see what's going on. Just very low power. So yeah, looks terrible. <clears throat> so. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust them with this thing. This is the long one I was talking about. 
and then we'll see I'm just on the neck board here so I'm gonna bust out my flashlight real quick so you guys can see uh, so I can see so red green and blue so blue is right here I'm gonna do the blue first so you can see yeah I just want to see if they actually do anything next one yeah they're crunchy too like I'm turning them and they're creaking there so what I'm gonna do is uh, let me switch the test pattern right here <laughs> wow there's like nothing showing that's supposed to be color bars there that's uh, each color and that's convergence which is off I can see already and that's supposed to be color bars too I believe I'll leave it there this is like probably the worst monitor I've ever seen yeah this one does nothing I'm turning it left all the way right all the way and that's red and let me go to the next red this is a drive for red nothing okay now I'm gonna do the blue no sorry the green nothing yeah it needs a rejuve if anything could be a dead monitor to the tube Wow all right well reflowing did not work I figured I'd give it a shot it was real easy to do now I'm taking a look at the monitor itself uh, I really should test the B plus to see what's going on but it, I mean it's fine it's on so it's not that it's definitely not that it's uh something going on over here and I believe it's just the tube all right guys so we're back here so um, I decided instead of waiting for that part um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the pots I mean I was gonna change them anyway uh, but I figured why not just do it so I ordered them from arcade parts and repair uh, Peter over there is such a great guy um, he showed me them I actually ordered a whole bunch of these right here um, I believe they're 200 and 2k yeah so there's 200 ohm then there's 2k and uh, there's basically six things on here there's four on top and two on the side and then uh, depending on which one it is that's what you change so I'm gonna go ahead and get that list uh, but in the meantime let me just just double check here one two three four five six all right so I ordered a lot because I do have another K7000 in my inventory and I do need to do a cap kit on that and usually when I do that um, I'll also you know change out the pots so this here this is awesome I'll leave a link as well in the description it's really a lifesaver for me it has a light on here uh, it's adjustable so you can point on stuff and these are different lenses I believe it ranges from like 3.5 all the way down to what does this last one say here to 1.0 um, 3.5 is really good if you're doing like really fine work like PCB work like I'm doing now um, so I usually just keep that one on there or I go with the one below that so this is really cool you just kind of strap it to your head it comes with glasses too that attach here but I felt with the battery installed uh, the glasses you know tend to droop a little bit but this keeps it nice and snug on your head and it's adjustable so you can't um, you know won't fall off and it won't really squeeze your head depending on how you adjust it I adjusted it pretty loose at first I didn't and this would leave kind of a mark on my face but eventually I did loosen it up and it worked out and it goes right over my existing uh, glasses or non-glasses whatever you want to use and it's really cool and you know this thing flips up as well so let me go ahead first thing I'm going to do here is just snip off the work I did earlier I kind of prematurely did that because I did not have the uh, stuff in stock but now I do um, I guess I can go ahead and just I'll take both off why not just to get it out of the way I'll put that over there and let's see here I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the board man there we go so that's it and um, 
let me go ahead and take these out. So I believe it says here, if you look really close, it says uh, VR201, and then it says VR202, VR203, 204, 205, and 206. So depending on which one it is, we're gonna go ahead right now and I'll just uh, come back in a sec and I'll let you know what's what. But I know it's every other one, so like this will be 200, that'll be 2K, 200, 2K, and so on. So let me go ahead and look at that. That way I can just replace the proper ones where they go. Okay, so I took a quick look and it's just as I thought. This is 2K and then it alternates. So <clears throat> it'd be 2K, 200, 2K, 200, 2K, 200. So let me take out the 2Ks first and I'll skip the other ones. Um, I have my Hako desidering iron here. Makes it nice and easy. I'm just gonna kind of heat it up. There's only three points on the other side. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna aim my uh, LED. So this is it here. So let's uh, go ahead and take these out. Super easy, this thing. And there's that one. And then I'll take out this one over here. I'm gonna do it all at once because it's just easier since I have my tool out. And two, two, and that's the first one right over here. This one looks a little, hmm. I think I refloated is what happened. I was gonna say it looked tampered with, but I did tamper with it because I was trying to reflow it. All right, so that looks good. Let me go ahead and see if I can pull this out. So these come right out. And I'm not gonna bother um, adjusting them. Typically what you do is you'll take a multimeter to the ends of these uh, the center point in the end, and then you measure the resistance, and then your new one, what you'll do is you'll match it up. So if I have the 2K, which is right here, these look a little different, but they fit exactly where they're supposed to go. Um, you kind of just match it up to do it the same way so that when you measure this, you turn it ahead of time to match whatever this is so that you're in the ballpark. So when you put it back, it's kind of in the ballpark of where you need to be. Um, but I'm not gonna do that because they're so, not even working at all. I'm just gonna center them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my tool here. And I'm just gonna insert it here and there's an arrow. So you just point the arrow up. I'll do that on three of them so I don't forget. So this one too, up. And this one here, up, all right. So that one's out. Let me go ahead and jiggle the next one out. That's the next one here. And then of course this last one here. So this Hako is amazing. It just takes everything out in one shot. <laughs> super cool, super easy, easy to use. Uh, those will stay in because they're kind of like pressured into the holes there. They're squeezing on it, so that's good. And this is one of the things, if you do a cap kit, you can't neglect doing these pots because, uh, you know, I would try them first, of course, but most of the time, you know, they're really cheap to buy. They're so easy to install, so you might as well do it. So I got my soldering iron here now, and I think I need some solder. Let me just grab it. It's a little tight fit here because I have the whole monitor up here, but it's fine. So let me just go ahead and solder this there. one. I normally set this to 750, but today I have it set for 650. I mean 650 has always done good, but 750 I just get in there quick. But I just set it a little lower. Works for me. All right, so that's that. And let me see, the next one would be over here. One, there's two, three. Let me just double check that last one. It's hard because this isn't bending the way I want it to. <laughs> it's really supposed to be flat, but uh, let me see if I can get in this one. It doesn't look too good. There we go. Nice. 
and then that one is good too. And then last but not least would be this one here. Sorry if I'm in the way. I really want to get a dedicated setup so that I can just have a table with a, with a dedicated camera there. But first things first, I got this wireless microphone. Next thing to get would be, I guess, a camera um, that doesn't corrupt stuff. This camera sometimes will do that. Um, let me just double check it real quick. So that's where this comes in handy. It's like magnified and you don't have to hold it. All right, that looks good. And now let me go ahead and now that the 2K is gone, put that on the side. Now I'm gonna take out the uh, 200K. And again, you do wanna measure them if you wanna put them in to match them. But I'm not gonna do that because I really don't care. Though. I feel it's so screwed up already. This one looks like it's up. That one's centered, and then this one is centered as well. Cool. All right, so these are the other ones. I usually toss these, but I'll keep them around just for a little bit, just in case. And let me go ahead and take, oops, and take these out right here. So you got those three. Uh, they're right here, okay. One. One, two, third leg right there, and then the last one is right here. This solder is melting fast because I actually removed the solder um, and reflowed that one. So that last one was totally easy to do. So this is it, pops right off. This one is a little, it's getting there. Well, let me do this one in the meantime. Let's see, why is that not coming out? Looks like there's a little bit. Oh, there's just, it's fine. It just was stuck, it was a little bent. So I'll put those on the side. And looks like uh, I'll put these in. And just to double check these say 200 on them, so I know they're different ones. They fit right in the holes where the other ones were. It's really cool. This one's a little, I'm just going to bend it a little bit so it stays in there because it's kind of trying to fall out on its own. I don't want that to happen. That's two and that's three right here. All right, let's see if I can get this to bend like I want to this time, because it's kind of a pain before that I didn't want to bend. Still, I'll put that underneath, try to help it. All right. So let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna get in there this time with my uh, nice glasses that I love. You can really see what I'm doing perfectly. All right, so there's one. Perfect. Man, this thing keeps slipping. You get the idea. <laughs> Let me just make sure it looks like those are shorted there. Yeah, I'm looking at it closer. That's what's cool about this thing. If you uh, do anything like that, you can just suck it right up. 
it looks like it's supposed to be touching actually. Hmm. I think it's fine. Let me put a little more on there. There we go. Nice. That's that, that's that, okay. Looks good to me. Let me go ahead and shut these off. Okay. Put this back to where it was. So now you have all of them in there. I just give it a little tug just to make sure that they're in. Everything's in there. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. One, two. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So this I can just pop on. We'll uh, make sure the key is on there correctly, which it is. These are facing up. Let me hold it over here just to get some leverage on there. I'm holding it like pretty center. I don't want to hold it on the edges and crack it. That looks good. I'm pretty confident on my repair job. So if it even was that, so I'm going to go ahead and um, I guess pop this on and then uh, I'll come back and then we'll have it turned around and we'll see what it does. All right, guys, so we're back. So I'm actually behind here, ready to plug in my outrun. And it looks like the monitor is on. I can hear neck glow. Uh, there shouldn't be an image until I turn on the TPG. So let me go ahead and do that. Sorry, I crossed in front of it here. All right, so I'm gonna try messing around with these pots again. Looks pretty awful. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be color bars right there. Here, let's try that. And um, let me go ahead and let me see if I can turn on a light over here. Because I can't see what I'm adjusting back here. There we go. See if you guys can still see the image, right? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So let me get my tool. And this will make it way easier to adjust. So I have the new pots in here. I'm trying to figure out what's what. It looks like this is the green right here. That's the red. And this is the blue. So the blue we knew was working. Um, this is it here. Yeah. So I just turned it down a little bit. Yeah, so this is doing something for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and see what these are doing now, if anything. Yeah, these are totally doing nothing. Let me center it up again. They work great. They're just not doing anything. I figured it would take a shot. Why not, right? They're really easy to swap out. And even if this is working 100%, I would totally swap them out anyway because it's better to have newer components in there. Yeah. All right, guys, so we're back. So I have another monitor here. This is actually from my OutRun. It's working. It's a K7000 as well. This here is a Rolling Thunder. You can see the burn-in uh, from that so you can recognize it. Um, what I ended up doing was I swapped the neck boards on them because I was kind of suspecting I didn't have these in stock, which are these... Uh, transistors here and I thought okay you know something might be wrong with it with the color turns out swapped it it behaves the same way so it is a tube and then that one behaved correctly on my working K7000 did a chassis uh, chassis swap as well and uh, it's totally fine so definitely the tube so I just got to wait for this connector here this is a pretty common CR31 um, so you could find them in TVs and stuff so I'm going to keep looking you know in the recycle center see if I can pick them up um, you know, maybe I'll get lucky. We'll get a tube swap. You just kind of take off the yoke and do it that way. But in the meantime, instead of waiting, I'm still waiting on that part for the rejuvenator. You know, I decided, you know what? Let me just pop in my spare. This one here I got pretty recently. It's a, what is it? It's a K4900 Walls Gardener. So it's very similar, but you know, it will fit in the machine, it has the frame and everything that will fit. It's almost identical, just a different chassis. 
Um, this here was all cut up. There was a guy, he was a cool guy and everything, but I'm not sure if he knew really the arcade hobby too well. And he had this plugged into an outlet when I got there. <laughs> if he had, uh, you know, if I had seen it beforehand, I would have told him, please don't do that. Uh, but anyway, he had it plugged in. He really shouldn't do that. You should plug it right into an isolation transformer. Um, so anyway, he had it plugged in. And then I just, um, since it was out, I plugged in my TPG. We had to kind of jerry-rig it because what he ended up doing, you'll see in this picture here, is he had these right here, right in there. They were soldered to wires and then heat tubed or heat shrink wrapped or whatever you want to call it, shrink tubing. <laughs> so that um, it, it's nice and neat and he had a really weird connector on there. But I ended up just, you know, crimping this on there, the, the proper connector. Um, I desoldered it with my, using my Hako, which is awesome because it just sucked the solder right off the pins. And then I was able to plug uh, my test banner generator right into it and it seemed to work good. It probably needs to be adjusted a little bit. Uh, we'll do that together, I guess. But I'm just gonna pop it in because I think what I'm gonna do is, um, since this is my spare and it's working well, I'm going to pop that in there and then this here will become my spare for now. Uh, this has a little bit of burn in. If you look really closely, you could recognize track and field. So it says first, second, third, and fourth place. Over here it says first, second, third, and then it says world record right on top. So instantly you know it's track and field. Um, it is pretty noticeable um, when you're playing because the top has like a green wall that's solid and you can kind of see it. but. You know, for now, I'm just gonna put it there. I guess we'll leave it in for now. It's working pretty good. And then with this one, until I get that piece, cause who knows how long it's gonna be. You know, with the holidays and everything, I know Arcade Buffet is busy. He still hasn't got back to me. I ordered the part. Uh, so hopefully we'll do that. We'll get this working in a future episode where we can rejuvenate it and stuff. So, so there you go. So this one is not capped as well. So maybe we'll do that in a future episode. We'll cap it. Um, you know, shouldn't be too hard, especially on these monitors. This is a good monitor to work on, the K4900. And then the, these K7000s are pretty easy too. There's just a couple screws that comes right out. As opposed to the 4600, which is kind of a nightmare to take apart. Uh, there you go. So let's go ahead and pop this in. We'll be right back. All right, so we're here. I'm going to kind of lift it up. It's kind of a weird angle to grab it at. <sighs> And you don't want to put it in too far because you don't want to snap the neck in the back. That'd be bad. So once it's flat, kind of ease it down. You got to be careful on the sides here. And there's like a piece of wood. There we go. There's a piece of wood on the back it kind of leans on. I would not trust it to hold it forever. There's bolts that's supposed to go there. So let me just quickly check in the back just to see if it's stable. And you know what? That looks perfect. Let me move it over a tiny hair. And then I'm going to slide some bolts in there just for now. I have a couple of these bolts here. And I'm going to put them in here. And one there. That way it can't put any pressure on this wood. Because this wood that's back here is only stapled on. There's like one, two, three, four, five staples holding it in. So I wouldn't trust it at all to hold the monitor in. So now that the bolts are in there, it's not gonna slide anywhere. Um, all right. So, you know what I should do too? Let me see if I can tighten some. Uh, what do I have here? There's a third bolt and a fourth bolt. Let me see, these might work. I'm gonna pop these in while I'm at it. <clears throat> see if I can reach up. Yep, there we go. So basically it's just four bolts in the wood. That's why I'm not showing you guys on camera because it's pretty, pretty simple. All right, so that's in there pretty good. It's good enough. So this is what I'm talking about here. This is originally on here. Um, I might just throw it in for now, but somebody repaired it with like electrical tape. I'm gonna kind of take it out a little bit. Yeah, they didn't do a great job. If I take it off, it's gonna make it worse. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it for now. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repair it with, um, I have black duct tape, which is pretty strong, and it's uh, not really that reflective, so it should be all right. But for now, I'm just gonna stick it in. I don't think they reproduce these. I could always make a new one, but for now, there it is. 
So I'll center it up a little bit. There you go. And next thing would be the glass. And at this point, I think I cleaned it already, but I'm just going to leave it because, like I said, this isn't a permanent thing. I'm just seeing this works. And I know this monitor works, so I'm not bothering to test it before I put all this crap back because I know it works. I just had it on the TPG. So this here is just a suction cup. It's pretty cool. It's like for repairing stuff. And you kind of just put it on there and now I'm just going to take it off. Just makes it easy to take the glass out. And then we have this here. This is the speaker grill. I will get it a paint job. I'm not going to right now, but I'm probably going to spray it down. And then here has like a padding for the glass. So I kind of just lift this up a little bit just to squeeze it in there. And I line up the holes. So let's turn it on back here. Yeah, now I can hear it. I'm just going to stay back here for a second just to make sure everything's fine. So we have neck glow, there's no smoke coming out, and we're good to go. And there it is, there's the image. So, wow, I don't really have to do anything. <laughs> I was going to adjust it some. I know there's an issue with one of the pots, I'm going to show you right now. Let me go ahead and get my flashlight. <clears throat> but one of the pots looks pretty bad. Let me see if I can... Would I be able to catch it? Let me see if I can catch it on the monitor over here instead of using the mirror. But one of the pots, when you move it, kind of has an issue. I think it's the red one here. Where if I turn it up, it does nothing. But if I turn it all the way, it kind of just blasts red all of a sudden. Yeah, see? Right there. And I back it down. There's no, like, in-between. It's either on or off. So there's something going on with that pot. I think what I might do is, is swap it out. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in there. It looks fine. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I probably have to adjust it here too a little bit. But all right, so let's play a game. Let's see how it is. I'll turn it up a tiny bit. I'm trying to figure out all oh, the volumes right here. Let's see. All right, here we go. We'll start area one. thing that usually kills me in this game is the time. <laughs> nice. Machine gun. close. So you can't go in any door. I just realized that now. I thought it was just the ammo doors. Let's kill this guy here. Oh, I was trying to go down. <laughs> Not an easy game. That was a little risky there. 
So when you get hit, you don't die unless you get punched right in the face. <laughs> so if you land on him, it gives you like half of that. Oh man, what's going on? <laughs> well, this joystick is pretty accurate. I'm just messing up. So we should probably switch it out. Um, I might do that another episode, only because um, I want to rebuild it. I don't want to just stick it in there. It's filthy right now. Let's just see how far I can get here. There we go. Silly errors. I gotta hurry up my time. There you go. So yeah, it looks great. jump down the stairs it's easier you don't get stuck uh oh ran out of bullets here Ooh, this is gonna be hard oh I went to jump <laughs> so there it is guys let me put my name in here I'm really happy it's working now so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm just gonna um should I pull the monitor? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to push this back in its row. We'll close it for this episode, and then in the future, we'll pull the monitor out. We'll do a cap kit. We'll do the pot adjustment, and then we'll be good to go. You know, I wanted to rejuve it. We'll just, I guess there'll be a part four now. <laughs> so <laughs> subscribe, tell your friends, do all the good stuff, hit the bell icon, be notified. But um, I'm on a roll with this. I really wanted this to, no pun intended, it's rolling thunder, but I am on a roll with this. I want it to get done. I want it in the row, and then uh, in the spring, I will definitely do that laminate to the sides and uh, fix it up and stuff. So thanks again, guys. Talk to you guys soon.